Greetings, everyone. I want to talk about the upcoming full moon on November 27th. But before I get into the energies of this full moon, I want to talk a little bit about how we can work with the astrological energies in this time, and how, as we're moving into the age of Aquarius, our understanding and how we perceive astrology may be shifting. I'm going to talk about this more in depth in an upcoming video. But I think what's important to remember is that our experience of astrology shifts as we move through the different paradigms culturally and historically of the processional cycle. And as we move into the age of Aquarius, which is that understanding that everything is energy, everything is a manifestation of cosmic consciousness, then we remember that astrology is not something that's predictive or deterministic. We don't explore the movement of the stars and planets to give us a sense of what is going to happen to us, what is going to unfold, what are we needing to experience? That's coming from a paradigm of separation, that those energies out there are somehow influencing or controlling our life down here. And then how do we as humans observe that and try to have some sense of control or how we respond to that? Astrology is actually the ancient language of the cosmos that is reminding us that we are a part of the oneness of all that is. We are a part of the sea of cosmic consciousness. So astrology is that language of the spheres. It helps us attune to the harmony, the symphony of the spheres to know how to come back into balance and into harmony, and into right relationship with all that is. So as we move into the age of Aquarius and remember that we are a part of this consciousness of all that is, then it reminds us that those energies of the stars and planets are within us as well as outside of us. Remember that hermetic principle, as above, so below. As it is outside of us, so it is within us. As it is within us, so it is outside of us. When we remember that, then we realize that how we work with these astrological energies has a significant impact on how they will manifest. If we work with them consciously, then we are co-creators with them of how they will manifest in our own lives and in our collective consciousness. Remember that these energies of the cosmos are guiding us in our own journey of growth and evolution. We are here on the earth plane to heal, to awaken, to move into higher consciousness. As we open and reconnect to those energies, as we awaken and move into higher consciousness, then we work with those energies to support us in how we are coming from the heart and how we are living from that place of spiritual consciousness and awareness. And then those energies manifest in us and through us in a way that supports us being in attunement, in right relationship with the harmony of the spheres and all that is. So it is important that we work with these energies at the highest level of consciousness. If we resist them, if we disconnect from them, or if we try to control them, or if we feel controlled by them and victimized by them, then we are likely to manifest them in terms of a lower level of consciousness and play out the shadow side of those configurations. So we need to take responsibility as we move into the age of Aquarius for our own level of consciousness 
and how we collaborate and participate with these energies of the cosmos that are around us and within us. In the upcoming video I'm going to be doing, I want to talk more about my journey in Egypt, and in particular, the profound way that I was moved by the most ancient sites in Egypt that resonate with the same wisdom and energy that I experience in the sites in Gobekli Tepe, in Peru, in other parts of the world that date back 12,000 years, where you feel and sense the wisdom and the energy of those sites that are about that deep understanding that we are spiritual beings having an embodied experience. And as we understand the sacred geometry, the energies, the harmonies of the universe, of the earth and sky and all that is, then we remember how to come back into balance with all of that and be the highest expression of our own consciousness, our own capacity to be a part of that love and wisdom and oneness, to be able to live that and express that in our lives on the planet. So I will be talking more about that in an upcoming video, but I want to hold that awareness as we look at the energies of this upcoming full moon. And remember that this full moon on November 27th is following the beginning of a new synodic cycle with Mars. And that began and went into full effect on November 18th. And let me show you that chart as it's a critical part of the energies preceding this upcoming full moon. So this is the chart of November 18th, when you can see that Mars is conjunct the sun and beginning a new 26 month cycle. This journey with Mars is beginning at 25 degrees of Scorpio and is, I think, in a profound way, guiding us in how we transform our experience of Mars and expression of that Mars energy, which remember is very much associated with our third chakra. What is our sense of self and how we express who we are in our actions, in our decisions, in our ways of expressing and asserting ourselves in the world. And it's profound that we're in this experience with Mars and it beginning of a new cycle at the same time we continue to be in this profound Pluto square with the lunar nodes, south node in Libra, north node in Aries, ruled by Mars. With this square of Pluto and the lunar nodes, as I've been talking about in previous videos, Pluto in its final degrees of Capricorn is deconstructing the old systems and paradigms of the past that need to die in order for us to move into new forms. And remember, in its applying to the South Node in order to activate the North Node, it is calling us Libra back into balance, back into right harmony with all that is in order to move into new directions, North Node and Aries, conjunct Arizona, new creative ways of moving into new forms and new expressions of ourselves coming from a place of harmony and balance, coming from being back in right relationship with all that is. So Mars is supporting us as it's in Scorpio in being in this deep dive, Scorpio, of transformation into a, of our sense of self and how we act in the world. The meaning of this degree with Mars as it's moving into its new cycle is about our ability to move into a new situation by being in attunement to the realm of nature. Again, I think it echoes that energy of Libra. How do we remember how to come back into balance and harmony with all that is? Mars is supporting us 
in coming out of those distorted patterns that are still in our collective consciousness coming out of the age of Aries, 2000 BCE to 0 AD, that led us into these patterns of separation and division and power over and destruction. We are being called into transformation. So hold that awareness of that profound cycle that's beginning with Mars as we look at the energies of this upcoming full moon. So here is the chart of the full moon, November 27th, and it will be with the sun at four degrees of Sagittarius opposite the moon at four degrees of Gemini. And this will be part of a T-square with Saturn at zero degrees of Pisces. You can see that Mars continues to be conjunct the sun as it's beginning its cycle. And I think it's very significant that the asteroid Ceres is conjunct the sun and Mars. Ceres represents our connection with the Earth Mother. And I think it is supporting us in coming back into right relationship with the earth and the energies of the sacredness of the life around us. Remember that Sagittarius is about how we are understanding our experience, how we have that awareness that we are on a spiritual journey, Sagittarius. Remember that Sagittarius is the constellation of the archer who's holding the bow and arrow with the tip of the arrow pointing exactly at the galactic center. So Sagittarius is that energy that is reminding us to stay connected to source and to be aware of who we are as spiritual beings in this incarnation, to be exploring and growing and evolving in our consciousness. And the moon in Gemini is how do we experience that? How do we experience our own understanding and our own integration? Remember that Gemini is represented by the twins, Castor and Pollux, the energies of light and dark. How do we explore and understand that duality, those energies within us, but again, hold that deeper belief and awareness and understanding of how we're working with that from a spirit place of spiritual consciousness. This is supported, in my perspective, by the square with Saturn in Pisces. I, as many of you know, I have a different perspective on Saturn than many astrologers do, in that I really see Saturn in its archetypal meaning as our inner shaman. Remember that Saturn is the outermost visible planet, that it is at that threshold between invisible reality and visible reality. It is the planet that is less dense than water. So it supports us in knowing how to move between the worlds, how to move between invisible reality and visible reality, how to be in this experience of our incarnation, but to hold that form lightly and to remember that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. And with Saturn in Pisces, which is about that deeper spiritual understanding and awareness of our being a part of the oneness of all that is, I think it strengthens that mystical gift of Saturn that can support us in be, finding our meaning, our form and structure in our spiritual understanding of who we are and our being a part of the oneness of all that is. So when we work with this T-square from that place of higher consciousness, it is supporting us in being grounded in our spiritual awareness of who we are as spiritual beings holding the duality of who we are, the light and dark of all that is, but holding that from a spiritual consciousness that supports us in living in right balance and coming 
from our hearts with love and wisdom. I also think it's very significant at the time of this full moon that Mercury is at 24 degrees of Sagittarius, meaning it is in alignment with the galactic center and it's squaring Neptune at 24 degrees of Pisces. So it's a supporting us again in this deeper spiritual understanding of our connection with source and the importance of dissolving those ways of thinking and beliefs that would keep us in a sense of separation. I think so much of the energy of this full moon is about dissolving old ways of thinking, those old paradigms of separation and division and polarization to open to new ways of thinking, new ways of believing that are about aligning with our source and our awareness of our interconnectedness with all that is. Remember that Pluto also in its powerful square with the lunar nodes is now in an out of sign sextile with the sun and trine with the moon. We're reverberating with that energy of transformation and it's trying to guide us in how we change the lens through which we see reality and our life experience to come into beliefs that are about our being interconnected with all that is and helping us come back into alignment with source and with cosmic consciousness. It's also significant that at the time of this full moon, Venus will now be conjunct the south node. So it's supporting us also in transforming our relationships, our ways of interacting with each other as we, Libra, come back into more balance, come back into more harmony. And remember that we are all interconnected, that everyone is a part of that expression of cosmic consciousness, and that we need to let go of the paradigm of separation and division and polarization and hostility and war and destruction. It's very significant to look at the meaning of the Sabian symbols at the time of this full moon. The meaning of the Sabian symbol for four degrees of Sagittarius, the, the phrase, the image is an old owl in a tree. And its deeper archetypal meaning is, how do we see light in the midst of darkness? How do we see light in the midst of darkness? And the meaning for the degree of the moon at four degrees of Gemini is about moving beyond the uncertainty and disorder of this time and of the limits of our collective perspective to open to new ways of being to be able to move into change and reform and new paradigms. So in a profound way, the energies of this full moon are giving us that spiritual perspective of being able to see the light in the midst of the darkness of these times and the turmoil and the disorder and the uncertainty. And the moon is supporting us in trusting our capacity to move into change. And again, with that Sagittarius Gemini sense of the larger consciousness and understanding of the meaning of these times, it's supporting us in seeing that this is a time of death rebirth of and dissolving of the old paradigms and old ways of being to allow us to reconfigure a new way of being to move into a new paradigm, to move into a higher consciousness that is about coming back into balance and harmony and awareness of our oneness with all that is. Let me now show you where the sun and the moon are in the sky at the time of this full moon. Remember that the visual astrology is showing us where exactly in the stars the sun, moon, and planets are versus the signs of the zodiac 
that are really associated more with the seasonal cycle here on earth and are not in exact, the signs of the zodiac are not in exact alignment with the constellations in the sky. So when we look at the exact placement of the sun in the sky at the time of this full moon, the sun and Mars and Ceres are all here in the stars of Scorpius, the scorpion, right beneath the stars of Libra. Remember, in ancient times, Libra was seen as a part of this constellation with Scorpius. And these stars were seen as the lantern being held by the Scorpion guide to the underworld. This was the light, the lantern to support us in that journey into the darkness of the transition at the time of death, but also those underworld experiences. So again, it resonates with the meaning of the degree of the sun, which is how do we hold that awareness of the light in the midst of the darkness, that with the sun and Mars and Ceres in the stars of Scorpius, it echoes this journey that Mars is in that is about deep transformation, a deep dive into radical new ways of being. And tied in with what I mentioned earlier with the chart, here is Mercury right in alignment with the galactic center uh, this is the archer with the tip of the arrow pointing to the galactic center, and the galactic center is under the care of Ophiuchus, the great healer, who's now overseeing all of these energies of the sun and Mars and Mercury, supporting us in healing and being in this process of deep, deep transformation to come into higher consciousness. At the time of this full moon, the moon is in the stars of Taurus, the bull, right here in the shoulder of the bull, very close to the stars of Pleiades. Remember that Alcyon, e. the, the primary brightest star in the Pleiades, is the star that our whole galaxy circles around. With the moon being here, again, it's a reminder of this larger cycle that we're in as we're journeying through this time and evolution of consciousness. And it's a reminder to come back into connection with source and into that remembrance that we are being held and guided by these energies of the stars and the cosmos and our earth to be moving into this new birth into this new earth and these new ways of being. So how do we work with the energies of this full moon? Remember, as I said at the outset, I believe these energies are holding us, supporting us, guiding us into these paradigms of the Aquarian age. The key is to not resist them, to not see them as separate from who we are. Remember, these energies are outside of us, but they're also within us. We are all a part of the sea of cosmic consciousness. And as we honor these energies and how they're supporting us in waking up and healing and transforming, then we're working with them to be moving through this transition, this death into a new birth. I just had one of my monthly patron meetings yesterday, and we were discussing again that incredible Hopi prophecy about this time. Remember that Hopi prophecy that guides us to let go of clinging to the shore, be in the river, be in the flow of that river guiding us to the new destination. We don't know where we're going. We're not in control of the process, but be with the flow of that energy and look around, see who else is in the river with you. Remember that we are the ones that we've been waiting for. We are in this flow of cosmic consciousness that is 
reflected in the energies of the stars and planets and in the energies here on the earth. And when we open to them, they live within us and support us and guide us through this time of transformation. So as you experience this full moon, allow yourself to open to being in the flow of these energies, to be letting your consciousness merge with the consciousness of the cosmos. And I encourage you to look at your beliefs, look at the lens through which you view your life and reality, and see the ways in which it may be caught in the paradigm of the past, the paradigm of separation, or the paradigm of fear, or of polarization. And allow yourself to let those old beliefs and thought forms dissolve. Allow yourself to let the fear dissolve. As you take in and feel the energies of this full moon that are just supporting us and realizing we're held in the love of the cosmos that it is all about how we can be supported and carried and guided back into harmony, back into being a part of the oneness of all that is. So I would encourage you to allow this time of the full moon to be a time to be reflecting on what beliefs and thoughts you need to release and how to let go of your fear. That sense of fear comes from a sense of separation, that something outside of me is not safe and will harm me. And as we release that sense of separation, we can feel and take in the love and wisdom of the cosmos and remember that we are held and supported and guided into this new way of being, into this new earth. I also encourage you to connect with that energy of Saturn and Pisces, the inner shaman. Connect to your spirit guides. Connect with your own intuition and inner knowing that we are spiritual beings, energy beings on the earth to be in this experience and expression of cosmic consciousness. So connect to your spirit guides, do a shamanic journey or do a meditation to connect with your own inner shaman and your own inner knowing. And I also encourage you as we're beginning this new Mars cycle to focus on your third chakra, focus on your own reflections on your actions and your ways of expressing yourself, your decisions, your ways of asserting who you are in the world, and look at how those patterns of how you act, how you behave, how you interact are coming from a paradigm of separation and division and polarization, of judgment, of hostility, of fear, or coming from a deeper awareness that we are interconnected. We are being guided back into how to hold the wholeness of all that is, how to honor each other in our diversity, but to remember our unity. So allow yourself to see where you may be getting caught in polarization or that experience of separation or fear or division. That paradigm is so powerfully active in the world in this time. And I believe part of that is we're purging the paradigms of the past and we're seeing them in their darkest forms in order to wake up and realize how harmful these old paradigms are. And I also think we're seeing a play in the world of those who have been very identified with the paradigm of power over clinging to control and power and trying to derail or block this movement into higher consciousness and back into that sense of harmony and oneness and the energies of the Aquarian age. So that is the process that's going on on the earth right now as we're in this karmic choice point with Pluto, 
squaring the lunar nodes. But each of us can choose the path of higher consciousness, of love and wisdom, of coming from the heart, to be emanating that and supporting that in the collective consciousness to support us all in moving into this new earth. This is a mystical time. This is a magical time. And I think the energies of this full moon, particularly with that connection with Saturn and Pisces, is very much about the dissolution of the old forms and being in this mystery, being in this liminal time, being in the river and trusting the flow of the energies of the earth and sky that are guiding us into this new way of being. So allow yourself to open to the mystery, to be in the not knowing, and to be in a sense of trust. Trust that your soul self is fully connected with the energies of the earth and sky and cosmic consciousness that are flowing and guiding us into the new earth and new ways of being. Allow yourself to be held, supported, loved, guided in that flow. And again, I'm grateful that as we're in that river that the Hopi prophecy talked about, and we look up and look around, we see each other and we feel the support from each other as we're moving in this ever more rapid river into new ways of being. Blessings and love to all of you as we journey together into this new consciousness and new earth. Blessed be.